Hello, everyone, and welcome to Locked On Flames. Today, we are wrapping up our player report card series with the goaltending tandem of Jacob Markstrom and Dan Vladar. Your Locked On Flames, your daily podcast on the Calgary Flames. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you, everyone, so much for tuning in to another episode of Locked on Flames. As always, I'm your host, Jess Belmosto, and today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online, where the game starts. Today, we are discussing goaltenders Jacob Markstrom and Dan Vladar because this was an interesting pair, a very interesting goalie tandem, and at one point, they were the best in the league. Um... And there's a lot to dissect there. (laughs) So the expectations were very high for the goaltenders this year. Dan Vladar was brought in um, from a trade with the Boston Bruins last offseason. He wasn't really getting any sort of significant uh, playing time because the goalie pipeline in Boston was significantly crowded. It still is kind of crowded. But... It's not like he wasn't progressing uh, at a good speed or it had anything to do with him. It was just uh, time for them to move on. And Calgary was a perfect home for him. And Don Sweeney and Brad Tree Living made it happen. And he, <laughs> this poor kid, he made his NHL debut in the bubble uh, in the postseason and was just left out to dry he there was no saving him there was nothing uh he could have done to have had a better stat line so you know his stats really weren't a fair representation of who the flames were getting or uh, who he was as a player like you couldn't paint a picture based on his nhl stats but if you look at his ahl stats kind of does paint the better picture and I think that the acquisition, the acquisition <laughs> uh, was perfect for the Flames since they were without a backup. They had traded away David Riddick to Toronto for a third round pick, which that third round pick was used to acquire uh, Dan Vladar. And, you know, Dan Vladar found himself at home. And it was a positive sign. Because it meant that Markstrom was going to get some rest. But hindsight is always twenty twenty, And start playing the clown music because Vladar only started 19 games. Um, he had a great stretch through the month of November. And then started to fall. It was kind of hard to watch. I'm not going to lie. Because he had shut out. Uh, a few teams in November and had immaculate, immaculate performances and then goes off a little bit. And then all of a sudden he allows 10 goals in two games against Carolina and Tampa Bay, who were arguably two of the best teams in the league at the time and were throughout the whole season pretty much. And I feel like that point was, kind, at that point, Daryl Sutter knew that he wasn't going to be able to use Vladar the way that he maybe wanted to. You know, the Flames, okay, I think regardless of who you put in net against Carolina or Tampa Bay, there's, there's still like a 50-50 chance of you losing, right? Because... That's how hockey works. But it's also like they're just a very offensively dominant team that knows how to read goalies. And it's not always as simple as you just like starting a goal, a better goaltender. Sometimes their offense just gets in the middle of things and gets in the way of things. But I really don't think that. We saw enough of Vladar this season. 
I'm going to talk more about that later in this episode because, you know, he only made 19 starts. And that's, you know, I, I feel like he should have made at least 25 if you look back through the game logs and you see where the Flames were in the standings versus the teams they were playing, <laughs> Vladar should have seen more time. And like I said, we're going to talk about that later on in the show uh, because it's just, it's a big point of contention when you're looking at this roster and how badly you want to see them succeed. And, you know, you have to set your starter up for success as well. It's not just, you know, your your offense and, you know, your your skaters. You know what I'm saying? But considering this was his first true season at the NHL level, I think you have to give him credit. He had a 13-6 and six record with a save percentage, a 9 or 6 save percentage, which isn't bad for a backup, like, to be able to differentiate between your starter and your um, backup. <laughs> like, you remember with Cam Talbot and David Riddick, how they both had, like, very similar uh, save percentages. And it's because neither of them were true starters. But for Vladar to, you know, stay above stay above 900 was very impressive, especially considering how some of those games went. It's as simple as that. But like I said, I'd like to see more from him in terms of starting and making appearances because it's it'll be good for him, it'll be good for Markstrom to get rest, and it'll be good for all of our well-beings. And, and coming up next, we're going to talk about Jacob Markstrom and his back-breaking season. But first, a word from Bet Online. When it comes to gambling, please gamble responsibly, as always. And Bet Online is your number one source for all your sports betting info and needs. Find all the latest sports development, league reviews, news, and including this year's Stanley Cup final and Major League Baseball as they approach the trade deadline. Bet Online is your continued source for all of your sports wagering information, including live betting, esports, scores, and they have some fun, like, political and reality TV stuff there. And BetOnline.net remains the best spot for your scores, podcasts, and news this season. Head on over to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more about the trends in action. BetOnline, where the game starts. As always, thank you so much for tuning in to an episode of Locked on Flames. If you're new here, hello. I'm Jess. You can follow me on Twitter at Jess Belmosto, and you can follow the show's Twitter feed at uh, LO underscore Flames Pod. And I have a, I used to do, I used to start the show with like Flame of the Day, and it was a candle, and here's today's. It's um, linen sheets from Bath and Body Works. But anyways, (laughs) um, it was just, I just noticed that it was like glowing on my face if you're watching on YouTube. So, the 2021 season, yes, we're going to rewind a little bit here. Like, the the expectations were high for the Flames, right? You know, they finally acquire a goaltender. And, you know, they have Jeff Ward, who, eh, you know, he was okay. He took the Flames to the playoffs, if you can consider their play-in series the postseason and then they lose in the first round to uh Dallas and eh, then he gets fired but you know the Flames fell short that year the during the regular season because they missed the postseason but that could also be because of the back-breaking work Markstrom had to do Let's rewind to the exit meetings, okay? Markstrom was P.O.'d. He was so upset that the Flames had missed the postseason, the expectations were high, and he ended up uh, ending the season with a back injury, which 
everyone was kind of making jokes. Like, of course he had a back injury. He was carrying this team on his back, like the entire way. And he couldn't get the proper rest that he needed. He ended up, you know, not having a backup goalie. <laughs> like, there, like, there obviously was an option, but it wasn't significant enough for Daryl Sutter at that point to say, like, okay, like, we're going to give you a day off so you can rest and we can make the playoffs. No. But flash forward to this year, and he finishes the year with a 37 15 and 9 record, which seems very high considering he started a career high 63 games. I don't like that. I don't like that he started that many games. And I'm looking at his hockey reference page right now. And he had not, he'd started 43 games last year, 43 the year before. 60, 60, 26, 33. Like, he played 20 more games this season than he had last year or the year before, which is a significant workload increase. I'm sorry, (laughs) but that is a lot. That is such a significant workload that really any goaltender, I don't think should be seeing that and I I get it like you're your starting goaltender you're being paid six million dollars to start but you should also have a goaltender that you can rely on to give your starter some rest and I'm not saying that it has to be you know your starter one day and then your backup like every other game because that's just silly for some teams like that doesn't always work and it's not always a recipe for success if the flames had a backup goalie they could do that with i still don't think they would do that method i don't um but there were absolutely games he could have sat out like the games that were late in the season against arizona new jersey chicago And anyone who was so far out of the playoffs that it didn't matter if they lost. You know what I'm saying? Like, it would not have been the worst thing if if he sat out against, you know, um, this game in February against uh, Seattle. Or let's even go later into the season. um, Chicago in April 14th, which Chicago was very much out of a postseason picture at that point. Uh, Seattle again in April 12th, Seattle, April 9th. And I'm, I can kind of get, I guess, um, LA Kings. Yes. St. Louis. Yes. But this game against Arizona, San Jose, Buffalo, Devils, Detroit, like, that stretch of games right there could have been broken up. And I don't think it's fair for Markstrom to have to play the no-brainer games where he should be sitting out. And for, obviously, like, I'm not a hockey coach. I don't possess the hockey IQ that Daryl Sutter has, that Bruce Cassidy has, that, well, probably more than Pete DeBoer. But you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not Barry Trotz, but I do have a little bit of common sense. It does not make sense to drive your goaltender into the ground when you're looking to make a deep run into the postseason, especially when it looks like you can make that run into the postseason. It just does not make any sense, and I get it. Sutter is stubborn. Old habits are hard to break, but this, it just doesn't make sense. And then, you know, overall, he did have a really good season. And he made ridiculous saves that looked so easy. And when someone does something that looks effortless and easy, it means they're really talented. Because you watch hockey and you see the, you see how easy Kale McCarr and Connor McDavid make looking these 
video game cheat code-esque goals look. You look at Ben Ottinger at his goals. You look at Jacob Markstrom and some of the saves he makes. Okay, well, let's look at um, Maddie Ziegler on Dance Moms and how easy she made dancing look and some of those, you know, ballet moves and whatnot. Like, it goes for everything in life, right? But on top of those really good performances, there were still performances that were a cause for concern. And I'm talking about him leaving the crease. That is a red flag. And that is when you know he's tired, he's bored, or not so much bored. He's tired or he's dealing with an injury. That is just something to keep in mind. But we do need to talk about the postseason. We're not, we're not avoiding that in the slightest. But he wasn't bad during that Dallas series. And I think people were annoyed that, you know, it wasn't this offensive, crazy dominant game where you're getting, uh, you're scoring seven goals and, you know, you're embarrassing one goalie. Jacob Markstrom and uh, Jake Ottinger, did I call him Ben Ottinger earlier? I don't know. I, he, I don't know why I always want to call him Ben. But Jake Ottinger looked so, like, they both looked so good. It was, like, the young blood versus the seasoned veteran, which is something that has been a reoccurring theme on this podcast this postseason, or this off season rather. And I don't hate what we saw from him. I think that him and Mike Smith did some sort of freaky Friday body swap during the Edmonton series because there is simply no way that that was Jacob Markstrom (laughs) between the pipes there that was not good but to say that he had like a really bad postseason performance is a joke he finished with a 926 save percentage which is a lot higher than I expected considering the Oilers stats didn't entirely skew his stats, but it do- it just doesn't make sense to me to sit here and say, oh, the Flames needed to get someone better than Jacob Markstrom, and they needed to uh, go out and overspend on a goalie. Like, they should have done something to get Marc-Andre Fleury or something. They were looking for a long-term piece here, and they found Jacob Markstrom who was willing to take less money to play in Calgary than Edmonton. Do not ever let that escape you. Don't. Coming up next, we're going to talk about the future of this tandem and why I don't think that this is going to be a long-term picture. Thank you all so much for tuning into Locked on Flames. As always, I'm Jess Belmosto, and... Please make sure that you are subscribed wherever you listen to this show. We're available on uh, every podcast platform, including YouTube. Dan Fladar enters uh, this post... I keep calling it postseason. This offseason as an unrestricted free agent. And I truly think it would be a dumb move. To let him walk. I don't think that uh, Dustin Wolf is ready to make his NHL, you know, that jump yet. I think he needs a few more years, which is fine because you don't, you do not rush talent like that. You, you know when it's time and I don't think it's that time. But back to Dan Vladar. He played his first season in the NHL this year and was a good backup. And I do want to see him start more games next season. He needs to perform at a level where his coach trusts him to go in and allows the starter to get more rest. Now, do I think that that means Daryl Sutter is going to have an epiphany and say, huh, I listened to that one episode of Locked on Flames. I I think it's time to let... Vladar start a few more games. No, I don't think he, no. I don't think he works like that. I don't I do not think that is his MO. And I don't even know if the Flames are replanning on signing him. But I do think that they need 
to let Dustin Wolf have another year or two in Stockton. Well, they won't be Stockton. They're, they're moving to Calgary. So another year or two for, for Vladar to play at the NHL level to allow your star prospect to develop is not the worst thing that could happen. It allows Vladar to settle in the NHL position into the backup position because he's not a starter. I'm sorry. Dan Vladar is probably not ever going to be a starter and that's okay. Regardless of who the Flames backup is when the season starts, Markstrom needs the rest. He needs to be able to relax, to breathe, to have a backup that he can rely on. And I I think that that could happen next year if Dan Vladar resigns. I don't think that Markstrom needs to go through this process of having like a revolving door of backups. I think that, that is very chaotic. And I don't want to say trust issues because <laughs> that's a lot more deep than I mean than it, I'm trying to get across. But I just... I think that it leads to a sort of fear of the unknown. Like, oh my God, no, like I I have to perform. Like I have to go out and start the games because we don't know how XYZ is going to play. And we saw how Markstrom flamed out, ran out of gas, and just fell apart at the end of the postseason because of how tired he was, because his regular season workload was mismanaged. I don't hate this tandem. I don't. And I don't think it's going to be a tandem where you see Marky get one start and Vladar get the next. I don't think it's going to be in every other sort of situation. Do I think it's going to turn into, you know, Markstrom plays three or four games straight. Okay, we have a, a game against the Coyotes. Vladar, you're going in. Or... Okay, uh, East Coast road trip. You're playing Philly. You're playing the Devils. You're playing Buffalo. Okay, split those games. I I almost want to say that that that's going to be the only way the Flames will see postseason success um, in their goaltending because you can't have him starting sixty three games, sixty five games. You know, I think that that is pushing it, and that's how you wear him out and make his contract age like milk in the sun. I like this tandem. I want to see where it goes. I'm hopeful that they, that they'll resign him, but we'll, we're just going to have to wait and see because I do not have any sort of crystal ball or magic premonitions here. (laughs) But thank you all so much for tuning into today's episode of Locked on Flames. As always, I'm Jess Belmosto. You can follow me on Twitter at Jess Belmosto. You can follow the show at uh, LO underscore Flames pod. You can find the show on your favorite podcast platforms. Make sure you give us a little like and maybe a review, a little rating. And uh, yeah, I will see you all, whether it be on Spotify, Apple, YouTube, wherever, uh, tomorrow when we start looking at, you know, free agency and how the the Flames have some work cut out for them, yeah? Yeah.